Hello and welcome back to Coin Lady channel. I need to start this video off with a warning. This is necessary because the latest Moon Family Sedan's room temperature jam is guaranteed to make your gears grind. You'll have to grind your gears so much that they'll probably never be on ground again. This is just a heads up. A word of caution. So, tread carefully. I'm only pointing out an option. But the SEC is the bottom line here. Oh my god, what a pile of garbage. Authority from the state. They want to scam you out of some XRP. They are attempting to scare you away from cryptography in the broadest sense, but they will fail. And I'd want to relay some of the messages that have been promulgated. This is not a political outlet, as I've stressed many times before. I will only discuss political issues if they directly affect the crypto and slash your financial industries. Well, that settles it. I doubt I'll ever reconsider my position. This station does not focus on politics. There will be no sermons from me today. And even if we disagree on political stuff, which is unlikely but possible, we should still be able to be friends and get along and, you know, be unified as an XRP community and a bigger crypto community in pushing back against the SEC. But I will continue to say things as I see them. If we're being intellectually honest, I wasn't exactly delighted with the Obama administration's crypto policies, but what's happening today under the Biden administration is much, much worse. It's a catastrophe. This is a full-scale attack on cryptography. And if you thought things were terrible for crypto under the Obama administration, they're even worse under Trump. I don't see how many one can honestly say that this isn't much worse. Therefore, we must resist this and any other attempts to stop us. If you're a politician and you're trying to stop crypto, I don't care what side of the aisle you're on, you'll get resistance from me. It's not a partisan issue. That isn't the focus of this particular channel. Not at all related to the topic at hand. But the news I received on the phone was not positive. But I do want to clarify something before we go any further. I come from no financial or legal background. Do not buy or sell anything based on anything I say or write, I'm not a licensed attorney or financial advisor. I'm just a fan that occasionally posts films to YouTube regarding crypto-related subjects for pleasure and as a pastime. Okay, then? Fox Business Network reporter Alina Terrett tweeted the following with some screenshots, which I will show you in a moment. She was a scoop writer long before the modern financial services industry. And when is the other hearing on digital asset regulation taking place in the House Committee on Agriculture? The Democrats committee members were sent a memo. Among the document's major points for the Democrats in the House was a call for them to back the SEC's power to regulate cryptocurrencies, a declaration that virtually all cryptocurrencies are securities, and the idea that the issue with cryptocurrencies isn't uncertainty but widespread non-compliance with the law. The messaging also claims that the Republicans on the committee who are seeking to decrease the budgets of financial regulators are not serious about protecting investors and that they should instead prioritize passing a clean debt ceiling measure rather than favoring crypto regulation. They're asking all of us in the crypto community, everyone who is currently listening why we would care about crypto specific laws. We in the XRP community have been shouting for years that we need answers and protection from the attacks we've been receiving. If the debt ceiling keeps getting bumped up against, do you think we should just ignore it and carry on as if nothing were happening? After all, every time it's hit, there's a little squawking back and forth between the parties, so it might as well be a fake ass thing. Furthermore, there is something else. The debt ceiling is increased when something is passed, and then life continues on as usual. That's the way it always goes, no matter what. This whole thing is a farce. Totally ridiculous. So, we shouldn't be thinking about things that truly matter to us. Sorry about that, does the government know how to multitask? You have asterisk seeking more on court yourself, you. Given the possibility of nearby youngsters. Parents, I apologize if I offended you. In other words, you've grown up and behaved like responsible adults. Okay, I'll give it to you gratis. There are actually two screenshots. This is the initial one. No, I won't be reading this. Since Elena mentioned it, I'm going to go ahead and look it up. However, this consists of multiple pieces. If you wish to read both of these in their full, you can pause the recording at any time I don't read them. 
but there are two that I want to highlight, points three and five. Again, use these as party conversation starters. It's as if you were saying don't use your own brain at all. If you are a Democrat in the House, please say the following. Central ideas. Finally, point three. The Republican Party has resolved to pursue divisive and far-reaching digital assets legislation that would establish whole new legal frameworks for the crypto industry. Investors, the SEC, and other financial authorities haven't urged Congress to act, but the Biden administration hasn't either. Wait, you mean that's accurate? That's how you see it, right? There has been no public demand for Congress to pass crypto-specific legislation. No one has ever done that, right? The opposite is true. Surely you can see through that as a falsehood. Everyone in the audience hopes that this will occur. I couldn't care less about your political beliefs. That isn't why we're doing this. You all want, want, want some form of lawful structure. Since Congress holds the reins, we expect them to take action. And here you have it, from the very top down in the United States' largest political party, acting like it doesn't exist. That's obviously not the case. That is clearly not the case. No one knows that better than the XRP, XRP community itself. Take a look at the fifth point. Has a turf war broken out now? In the absence of a dispute, the SEC and the CFTC agree that it is the SEC's responsibility to decide whether or not crypto assets are securities. And the SEC has made it abundantly clear that the vast majority of crypto assets are securities. All of that is the end of the story. Folks, the leadership of this political party, I swear to you, is behind this. They intend to wipe out the crypto industry as a whole. They claim. All of that is the end of the story. Virtually every crypto asset is also a security. All of that is the end of the story. Oh, oh, the end of the narrative. Oh, I had no idea. Therefore, this topic is closed. Finished with the courts for good. There's zero role for Congress. Not a single thing. There is also no fighting over territory. What? What the hell is wrong with you? Seriously, there is no doubt that the CFTC is taking on the SEC. Furthermore, ETH, the world's second largest cryptocurrency by market cap, is at the center of contradictory comments from both parties. That's not even close to being true. They're just making disrespectful statements. It should be insulting to everyone holding XRP. Honestly, I couldn't care less. I repeat that it makes no difference to me whether you identify with the political left or the political right. You have every right to find this insulting. You can put politics aside. About this much nonsense. Waste of time. It simply isn't so. Everyone here is at risk if they succeed, as we can safely assume that everyone listening is involved in some way with cryptography. Almost certainly all of us are holding XRP. Even though this channel is focused on XRP, I assure you that I discuss all things crypto. However, XRP is the focus because it is my preferred cryptocurrency. Since this is my area of expertise, I give it my undivided attention. That's why I know it's a fabrication. Since you and I are aware, I know this to be false. Who, if anyone, is buying this, if you're listening? In other words, the answer is non-cryptographers. And therefore, if they succeed, it will only hinder the spread of cryptocurrency in the US and hurt us as investors. On its face, it's offensive to me. John Deaton, an attorney, shared this from its original poster because he shares the same sentiments. He opined that lawmakers should be voted out of office if they refused to think for themselves and instead followed party lines. Dead on. Deaton, attorney and then there's Meta Lawman, the Twitter handle of attorney James Murphy. He sent Alina's tweet and added his own commentary. Alina Terrett discovered a memo that was distributed to Democrats in advance of today's hearing on digital assets. In the memo, it is said, quote, the SEC has made plain that nearly all digital assets are securities, end of story. Quote ends. Thankfully, this is not the final chapter because of Gary Gensler's thoughts. Ultimately, the courts will decide whether or not digital assets traded on a secondary market are securities, and they should rule that they are not. All of that is the end of the story. Dead on. James Murphy is a lawyer. 
dead on. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to the backlash. And this isn't even the worst of the junk we've had to push over the past couple of days. Gents, gents, recall Democratic Representative Brad Sherman. I've mentioned him several times in recent years. He's a leading voice in the congressional opposition to cryptography. It's not shocking when you consider who some of his major donors are in terms of donations made to him personally. Because I didn't want to go too technical in this video, I didn't even look up the list. However, I have already done so on this platform. It's not that shocking. I have my doubts that he believes what he is saying. This, however, is what he said. Fear of missing out, he said, was a widespread problem. This is from California State Representative Brad Sherman. In terms of cocaine manufacturing, he claimed, quote, Peru is light years ahead of us. When it comes to organ donation, China is light years ahead of the rest of the world. We are exempt from the obligation to remain current in either that field or cryptography. Now you know. Remember, he's crypto humming your financial security. He classifies crypto as a serious problem on par with drug trafficking and organ removal. In what way do you see that? Isn't this some fantastic material? You'd like to see a leader like that in charge, right? Holy crap. So, a guy named Jake Bruckman retweeted that. Coinfind.io founder is someone I've never heard of before. And this popped up in my feed, and I immediately thought, yes. This is why I felt compelled to tell you about it. Okay, so he did say that Rep. Republican Senator Brad Sherman. It's not him. In other words, he's a representative because he is currently serving in the House. Nonetheless, I'll go ahead and read it as Jake intended, complete with a typo. Take a moment to consider the situation. A US senator has labeled as essentially criminals and drug dealers an entire industry consisting of hundreds of thousands of US-based business owners, investors, service providers, and 50 million plus consumers. Besides being the source of his income, these people are also his best shot at making the United States a world leader in the most crucial area of infrastructure technology in the 21st century. In this individual's perspective, technological advancement is synonymous with narcotics and organ trafficking. The little clown emoji is on his keyboard, too. That's a good description, for sure. Except for one minor detail, you got it exactly right. However, he's not a senator but rather a member of the House of Representatives. Consider the new twist on a classic series that is taking place. And all of it is just going to be trashed. Simply fantastic. There are such people out there. Then, have a look at this. Will Clement references another of his quotations here. That is why I found this particular example. According to Brad Sherman, though, crypto bros created over a trillion dollars in value. They will claim that the United States government creates value out of thin air. Perhaps we do. But where was the American government? That can't be a human, can it? Like, how is this a real person being elected? Who is backing up this individual? This is mind-boggling in the extreme. This crypto expands. Oh my god, you guys are really picking on us crypto folks. Over a trillion dollars were created out of thin air by the crypto guys. You can't just make the effort appear out of nowhere, sorry. In any case, we can create the item out of nothing, right? Your mystical virtual currency is useless, but our phony currency works just fine, right? Just how ridiculous it is. The irony. The value of the US dollar was further eroded by these. According to him, it's perfectly acceptable. We can make it work, I guess. Oh, that truly grinds my gears, have you reached the point of no return yet? Like I said in the video's disclaimer, I take full responsibility for the possibility that they won't make it to the ground. To the contrary, it's the last thing I want for you. But that's the way the cookie crumbles. What a bunch of hogwash. However, I will admit that there is some good news for Ripple before the video ends. Anders, a member of the XRP community, made this observation. For LinkedIn, he congratulated Ripple for hiring more than a thousand people. He also included a screenshot, stating that 1,004 people work at Ripple and that the company is currently accepting applications. So that's encouraging in light of everything, 
despite the SEC attack. In my opinion, Ripple is a positive influence inside the XRP ecosystem, thus I'm happy to see them succeed. That's now beyond reasonable doubt. And Susan Friedman, who works with Ripple, wrote the following early this evening. The threat of domestic innovation being lost to foreign competitors is real. Many in the crypto industry are moving to Europe, where the regulations are more developed. The loss of jobs and investment opportunities as a result of regulatory stagnation in the United States is now quantifiable, thanks to MICA. Anders did remark here that Ripple is, quote, still adding a lot of jobs, which I find noteworthy. The largest number of available positions are in London and Toronto 24 and 26, respectively. They're expanding, then? It's largely located in countries other than the US. And you know, with the development of the firm and expanding the Ripple net and on-demand liquidity, you'd expect a lot of it to happen regardless. But if it weren't for jerks like Kim Jong Gensler and the SEC, there'd be a lot more happening in the United States. As for me, I don't offer financial advice. Nothing I say or write should be used as a basis for making financial decisions. Please like and subscribe my channel. See you later, bye.